All right, so in this video, I want to describe two common mandibular orthognathic procedures. So I'm using Slicer software here, and I have a model representation of a mandible. This is from a CT scan. And first, I'll go over what was traditionally done for mandibular surgery, and that is a vertical ramus osteotomy. So this is the mandibular ramus. And a vertical ramus osteotomy was one that cut the ramus of the mandible vertically, like that. And so you can see how this would work. And the idea was you made your osteotomy posterior to the inferior alveolar nerve and artery. So this little bump on the mandible right here is the lingula. It kind of marks the entrance to the inferior alveolar nerve canal uh, through which runs the inferior, inferior alveolar nerve and artery. So once you make this osteotomy, in theory you could move the distal segment of the mandible forward or backwards, but if you move it forwards, you can see how there would be a gap. And that gap would have to be filled in with bone if it was large enough. And so many people would do a mandibular setback so that the mandible could be set back medially to the um, ramus or the ramus condyle unit and then could be fixed in place without a gap. But sometimes you may want the distal mandible to come forward and not be brought back. So this was always challenging. And then somebody discovered a different osteotomy or invented a different osteotomy called a sagittal split osteotomy. It's, it's not easy to do on a computer simulation but I will I will try. So it, an osteotomy would be made from about the lingula down the ascending ramus and depending on who you ask either to the level of the third or first molar and then down to the inferior border of the mandible. And I'm just going to do it in a very rough way. And there you go. So it would look something like this. And it's called a sagittal split osteotomy. You can see the osteotomy is in the sagittal plane. And it's called a split osteotomy because if you were to take the saw and go right through the mandible, you'd be going right through the inferior alveolar nerve canal and you'd be cutting right through the nerve and the artery. So what is done is the osteotomy is made just through the cortices and if it's done well enough and all the way through the inferior border then, I'm not sure what the tool is called, but it's, it's like pliers that go into this little gap and then slowly spread it open. And so these spreaders ratchet up kind of just a little bit at a time, and you hear a cracking and a splitting. And it typically, if the osteotomies are done right, it splits around that inferior alveolar nerve um, canal in a fairly reliable and predictable manner. So this is called a sagittal split osteotomy. And the genius behind this design is that now the mandible can go forward or backwards and there'd still be bony overlap. There'd be no significant gap. So you could either place bicortical screws across to fix the mandible in place or a plate or plates that go across and fix the proximal and distal segments that way. So this allows for rotation, setback, advancement, any kind of mandibular movement you want without a gap and without the need for a bone graft. So in summary here, we have a vertical ramus osteotomy on the left and a sagittal split osteotomy on the right.